Welcome, uh, this is Mr. Morin, and today we're gonna make a video looking at projectile motion. Uh, there's lots of different examples of projectile motion, so today we're just gonna look at an example where we're taking a ball launched at a certain initial velocity with a given angle, and we're gonna try to find a few things out, like the time of flight, the maximum height, and how far did it go horizontally? So this is a projectile motion problem. And the first thing we've done is just kind of draw out what we're looking at. We're saying we're launching something. If it's a projectile, it's gonna be going in this parabola type shape. We're trying to figure out what's the range, what's the max height, also how long is it in the air? Now it's a given that our acceleration in the y direction is going to be g, and we're gonna say that's negative 9.8. By calling this negative, we're defining down to be negative and up to be positive, okay? So we have our initial velocity at this angle. Now, one thing we need to make sure we understand, we're gonna be using these kinematic equations anytime we're doing projectiles, okay? We can apply these equations in the x component or in the up and down, the y component. So instead of xf or x naught, we could have yf or y naught for these. And instead of an f, this could be at any point in time. This is just if I wanna know how far did it go after some time. This is really just a function. So a lot of times you'll see this as an f, meaning final, but that final only applies to whatever time span we're talking about. Sometimes that might be the amount of time it takes to get to the peak, to get to the whole path of the projectile. It just kind of depends on the specific thing we're looking at. Another thing we need to be very aware of with projectiles is that there's something important to know about the top. Whenever we get to the top here, we know that our velocity in the y direction is zero meters per second. And we're gonna use that a lot when we're looking at projectiles. Now the velocity in the x direction is not gonna be zero. It doesn't change. In order for a velocity to change, we need an acceleration. The only acceleration we have is gravity and it's only acting in the y. It's not acting in the x. So whatever horizontal velocity this thing has is gonna be constant if we don't have air resistance. And for right now, we're ignoring air resistance. So the first thing I usually do before I even start trying to figure things out is take my initial velocity and break it into x and y components. So my initial velocity in the x is going to be cosine of 30 degrees times 15 meters per second. My initial velocity in the y is going to be sine of 30 degrees times 15 meters per second. And we're gonna take our calculator and figure out what those are. So we're gonna take cosine of 30 times 15, and we end up with 12.99. We're gonna call that 13. And then whenever I take sine of 30 times 15, I get 7.5. So we have our initial velocities going side to side and up and down. Uh, 13 and 7.5. So, we're trying to find a few things. The time of flight, how long a projectile is in the air, is always going to be determined by what's going on in the vertical direction. This thing is going to be in the air until it hits the ground. What's making it hit the ground is gravity. So that's how we're going to figure out time. We're always going to look at the vertical component to figure out time. Same idea with maximum height. Obviously, the height is dictated by what's going on in the vertical uh, component of velocity. And then with horizontal displacement, that is controlled entirely by our x velocity. This is going at 13 meters per second, and that is constant. There's no acceleration in the x, so it's going 13 meters per second from left to right the entire time. Once I know how long it's in the air, then it's pretty easy to find out how far it goes. I'm just gonna take my speed times time. So let's figure out time first. So in general, what we're gonna do to figure out the time of flight is we're gonna use the fact that the velocity at the top is zero. If I know how fast it starts going up and I know that it goes to zero at some time, 
and I know my acceleration, then we can definitely look at our kinematic equations. I'm looking for time. I know my starting and stopping velocity, and I know that acceleration is just gravity. I know everything I need to use this equation except time, which is exactly what we're looking for. So we're going to use that equation. We would say that the Vy final equals Vy initial plus At. Now our acceleration is gravity, so we need to keep that in mind. Our final here, we're talking about going to the top. So keep in mind, this time here is just time to the top. So that's not the entire trip, but this is symmetrical. If I'm starting and stopping at the same spot, then the time to get to the top and the time to get back are gonna be the same thing. So once I find this time to get the entire flight, I'm just gonna double it. We also know that if I'm talking about the time to get to the top, then this velocity at the top, that's gonna be zero. Okay, so we can plug everything in. We would say zero equals well, my velocity in the y initial, whether I put v not y or v y not, it's talking about the same thing. This is 7.5 meters per second. My acceleration is gravity, so I get negative 9.8 meters per second squared times time. So if I want to solve for time, I'm going to subtract 7.5 and divide by negative 9.8. So then I get that time is 7.5 meters per second divided by 9.8 meters per second squared. So whenever I plug that in my calculator, 7.5 divided by 9.8, we end up with 0 0.765 seconds. But we have to be careful. That's the time to do what? That's the time to get from here to here. So then my total time is just going to be two times 0 0.765. And we end up with 1.53 seconds. So that's the first thing we figured out. 1.53 seconds is the amount of time it takes to get from here to here. And we know that they're only talking about to get to the first half with this first equation. We have to be very careful when we're solving for time to think about what time frame we're actually looking at. Okay, so now let's look at max height. So in the y direction, if I wanna figure out where it's going, there's two ways I could do this. If I know time, I can use this equation. If I don't know time, I could use this equation, okay? We just found time, and I'm pretty confident that we did it the right way, but if we're not sure if the value that we just found is correct, it might be safer to choose an equation that doesn't rely on it. I know my velocity in the y direction at the top is zero, I know my starting y velocity, I know gravity, so I could use this to figure out what's the change in displacement. I know these say x, but that just really means position. We could put x, we could put y, we could put z, it just depends on which direction we're talking about. So we're gonna go ahead and use this equation. If you wanna use this one instead, that's totally fine, but we're gonna use this one. So we would say for max height, We're gonna say that V Y final squared equals V Y initial squared plus two A delta Y. Now remember delta just means final minus initial. So whether we put F minus not or just put delta Y, it's okay. I'm trying to find this entire change so I don't need to have it as two separate variables. Our velocity in the Y at the top is zero. So we can go ahead and plug everything in. We would say that zero equals our y velocity initial is 7.5 
squared. We're using gravity, so we're gonna say minus two times 9.8 meters per second squared times delta y. So I wanna solve for delta y. So I'm going to square this and subtract it to the other side and then divide by everything here. So I get that delta y equals 7.5 squared is 56.25, and that's gonna be meters squared per seconds squared. And then we're going to divide that by, and this whole term is negative because we subtracted it. And then we're gonna divide that by negative two times 9.8 meters per second squared. And notice what happens with my units. If this is meters squared per second squared divided by meters per second squared, we're left with just meters on top. Everything else is gonna cancel out. So when we plug everything in, we end up with a value of 2.87 meters. So we found our time for the flight, we found our maximum height, and the last thing we need to do is find the, the range or the horizontal displacement. What's making it go from left to right is our x velocity, which is not changing. It's gonna be a constant rate, okay? So if I know my x velocity is a constant rate, if I wanna figure out the displacement, I'm simply gonna use my position function there's no acceleration, so this whole term is gonna go away. I'm starting off at zero, so really what I'm saying is that my horizontal displacement, we're gonna use this equation, that xf equals x naught, plus V naught T, and this is V naught X T, because we're talking about in the X direction, plus one half A X T squared. Well, this whole thing is zero. And if I'm looking for the range, it's the change in displacement, so I can subtract X naught. So I'm saying that X F minus X naught is equal to V naught times T, x naught is zero, so we're just going to plug in and say that my xf is equal to my initial x velocity, which we said was 13, times the time. Now what time are we talking about? It's the time that this is in the air, which is our total time of flight, the 1.53. This is where you have to be careful. We found a time earlier of 0.765. That time was just to get to the top. So you really need to be careful with these time frames, especially on some of these problems where we might have more uh, confusing setups. So we have our velocity times our time of 1.53 seconds, and we end up with a final position equal to 13 times 1.53, 19 point eight nine meters. So we've described this projectile pretty well. We know how long it's in the air, we know how high it's gonna go, and we know how far it's gonna go. So this is an example of a projectile motion problem. Hopefully that kind of gives you an idea of how to approach these. We're basically just applying these kinematic equations that we already learned in one dimensional motion. We apply them up and down in the y direction, side to side in the x direction, keeping in mind that our acceleration only applies to the y and that we know a few things that are helpful, like the fact that the top of our projectile path has a vertical velocity of zero and that our x component of velocity has a constant velocity. So hopefully this was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, just shoot me an email and I hope you guys are having a good day. Thanks.